Thanks, guys. Good afternoon. Um, this, talk, this talk is not like the others. I don't have screen, screens of code and command lines. I've got normal slides. And I'm just going to kind of talk to you a little bit about a project I've been working on. The um, project I've been working on is Ghost. And um, if you haven't heard about Ghost yet, it is a free, open source, and simple blogging platform aimed at enabling digital publishing for the masses. And it is built in Node. Um, and kind of all got started last year when uh, my friend, John, whose face is on the screen, he kind of decided that he'd had enough of uh, the WordPress user interface and other user interfaces of platforms like it, um, and decided to have a go at designing his own. And um, he came up with this idea for a user interface that was much sleeker, much. Let me stop working. Um, nope. Okay. Technical difficulties. Right. Uh, it's a much sleeker UI. It is uh, minimal. It focuses on writing, and it is all about eliminating anything that gets in the way of a, write, of a blogger and their writing. Um, and it features this split screen editor that you can see over there, where you have Markdown on the left and the HTML preview on the right. Um, and uh, what he did was he designed this user interface and he put it out on a, on, a blog, on a blog post just to try and get an idea of whether other people had the same sort of frustrations, whether you know, there was a, a market, I suppose, for the, for the idea. Um, and that blog post kind of got quite a lot of positive attention. Uh, it was number one on Hacker News for a while, and there was a lively debate that was quite positive, which is good for Hacker News. And, um, <laughs> It also got some press interest, and I mean, even the CEO of WordPress got involved on the Hacker News post. So it kind of got quite a lot of positive attention, and he, John decided that he was going to have a go at building this platform. Um, and that's kind of where I got really involved. He phoned me up and he asked me if I would build him, please, a WordPress plugin that completely replaced the WordPress admin user interface with his design. Um, and so we got stuck in, and very quickly found that. This was a really, really bad idea. Um, that all we did was hit our heads against exactly the same limitations, the same challenges, the same problems that WordPress has, and the same problems with PHP. Not just technically, but also philosophically. Um, all of the problems that were, in fact, the motivation for building Ghost in the first place. So uh, we decided to do something different um, and build our own application. And although that was kind of a difficult decision, the decision to leave the WordPress ecosystem behind and, and do something different, the decision to build it in Node was reasonably straightforward. I mean, after all, we've been building a plugin, um, building a user interface which was modern. It was mostly written in JavaScript. It was a large ap one-page application. Um, and so extending that out into the server side was, you know, was a logical conclusion to make. And not just that. When we left the WordPress ecosystem behind then, what we did instead was position Ghost to be part of this wonderful, vibrant JavaScript community that exists, completely open source, the whole world of NPM and packages and, and so, much, uh, so, so much effort and, and ability out there that we wanted to get involved with. Um, and so yeah, we decided to build it in Node, and I started building a prototype. Um, and then in April this year, we put it on Kickstarter. Uh, originally with the goal of raising £25,000, a goal that was intended to allow us to sort of start the company off. Um, but we raised that £25,000 in 11 hours. Um, it kind of went quite well. It was kind of mind-blowing. Uh, and eventually, over the four-week period, we did raise nearly £200,000 across 6,000 backers. Um, and that was on PayPal as well as Kickstarter. Um, and, you know, it was simply amazing. Uh, and then we also managed to form some really cool partnerships with companies, including Envato and WooThemes, promising to help us build a theme ecosystem for Ghost. Uh, and uh, very others, uh, various other people who've gotten really heavily involved with the project. But most importantly, um, we incorporated Ghost as a non-profit organization. And um, I'm going to take a few minutes just to explain what this really means. It means that neither John nor I own any part of Ghost. We're actually just trustees of the company. It means there are no shareholders, no investors, no VC funders. The people who backed us on Kickstarter are the people who are funding this project. And no one else has any ability to affect the direction that the application goes in by throwing their money around. Um, we can't be bought out 
by Yahoo for 1.1 billion pounds. Um, none of that. None of that. We can't. Um, and uh, although we do have a revenue stream, which I will talk about later, um, we aren't going to do anything like advertising or selling users' data. It's all, you know, it's all about privacy. It's about owning your own data. It's about being open source. Um, as I said, but we do have a revenue stream um, because non-profit doesn't mean you can't make money. It means you can't make lots of money as one person. It means that every single penny that you raise as a non-profit company has to be put towards continuing the development of the platform. And so the cycle will continue. Hopefully we will manage to continue to raise funds. We will pay developers so that they can pay their rent. And we will continue to build Ghost. And all of this is, is, just means that we are completely free to continue on our mission, which is to build just a blogging platform and to really focus on providing users with the best experience possible. Um, and so the end of the Kickstarter campaign, we started to focus um, on how we were going to deliver the promises that we'd set out in Kickstarter. Mm. We'd actually set ourselves some pretty tough challenges um, to deliver by the end of summer something that people could use to build <coughs> blogs. Um, and the way that we were going to go about building that was to put together teams of contributors, open source contributors, who were going to help us build Ghost. Now, even though Ghost has been uh, on GitHub, it has been private just for the first few months, but the team that's behind it are still volunteers, they're still open source contributors, they're just people that got in touch with us. All we did was we asked that anybody who did want to be a contributor just sent us an email, and we picked a team of people who had a range of time available, of expertise, of different in interests, and also a range of levels of enthusiasm. And uh, we put together a team of around seven people just to start with, and then we grew that over the time of the project. Up till now, we've got around 20 people who are contributing code, but also loads of other people who are doing quality assurance, security assessments, documentation, kind of loads of people who are really getting involved um, and giving their time to ghost freely. Um, and that team of people is... You know, mostly what my job is at the moment is looking after those people and guiding them. And um, I think managing open source is probably an oxymoron. But my job is looking after those people and trying to keep them enthusiastic to make sure that they have the things that they want to work on um, available to them and so that we can drive the project towards the goal that it has in mind. Because it does have a goal in mind. It is design-led. We have a user interface and we want to make that user interface do wonderful things. Um, and it just blows my mind, actually, every day, the people that are involved in this project, how much effort, how much time they put in, how much they care. It's it, absolutely fantastic, and you know, the enthusiasm is fantastic. And we, uh, so since the end of the Kickstarter campaign in May, we shipped roughly-ish on time um, with our VIP backer access, where we let people have access to nightly and weeklies. And that was mostly delayed due to the fact it took us longer to build the infrastructure the, uh, to deliver the builds to people than we imagined. And that was a, a lesson we had to learn early on as well, was that we didn't actually just have to build Ghost. We had to build a community site. We had to build uh, a hosted service. We had to do branding. We had to plan a launch party. All of these other things that have gone alongside the software. Um, so we delivered to our VIP backers. And then just, just over two weeks ago, we delivered to all the Kickstarter backers. Um, and the most important date of all, I suppose, is that we are going to make it completely public on October 14th. That's Monday. I don't know what I'm doing here. Um, <laughs> uh, so, yeah, so it, the, we will flip the switch on the GitHub repo on Monday and everyone can get involved. And we really hope that, you know, lots of people will come along and contribute ideas for how we can make Ghost more awesome. There we go. The Kickstarter, the uh, GitHub repo that does exist. It's just hidden away at the moment. So what's the future got in store? We've got so many big plans for Ghost, and, and what we've delivered so far and what we're delivering on Monday is really just the beginnings. Um, there's a lot more features that we need to build. There is SEO. We want to add much better support for images and video, localization, static pages, tag pages, um, and uh, multi-user as well. The, the version that we're shipping at the moment is just a single-user blog. Um, but we will be rolling out multi-user, and along with that, some really uh, in-depth features around publishing workflows, supporting relationships between editors and authors, and allowing people to have you know, different and complex permissions. 
that kind of thing. And also, one big feature that, hasn't, that was featured heavily in the Kickstarter campaign, actually, but isn't in the release that we're doing on Monday, is this dashboard that you can see here. Uh, the dashboard's not there yet because, as of yet, we don't have a plugin ecosystem. There aren't that many plugins available yet. And without the plugins, there isn't really much data for you to pull in just yet. Um, so that leads me on to one of the bigger features that we will be delivering as soon as possible after the public launch, which is our plugin API. Again, another way for developers to get involved and, and build tools that go alongside Ghost. And the idea is that the, the, although all of our features that we're working on are really heavily focused around publishing digital content, um, the tools that we provide you for building on top of Ghost allow you to do pretty much whatever you want with it, and that in user land you can make it whatever the hell you want. Um, so that will be coming soon. And then the other big one is our hosted service. Um, and this is the revenue stream that I was talking about earlier. We will have a service whereby you can press a green but the big green button on ghost.org and just set up your own blog in a couple of clicks. Um, and we will look after it for you. But it won't be free. This is where you'll pay us. And that money will then go straight back into the project and into developing it further. Um, and that we are currently rolling out to people. I know there are some people in the room who actually have access already. Um, right, so what's in the box? How is Ghost built? First of all, obviously built on Node. So I covered that already. It is underneath it. It is an express application. We defined some routes. There's a lot of middleware that we use for serving requests. Um, and one of the things that you do, you know, is pretty standard in express when you're initializing an application is you set up your views. You tell Express where to serve templates from. Now, Ghost is a little bit different um, to other Express applications that I've seen, because not only do we have two different sets of templates, one for the admin and one for your theme, but the theme is also switchable. You can switch themes whilst the application is running without the server having to be restarted. Um, and the way that we do that is it's a slightly undocumented feature of Express. You can actually access the stack. It's just an array which points to all of the functions that you have as middleware. Um, and we go hunting through there and find the function which is going to serve your theme or your theme's views. And we replace it and hot swap it with a new one. And that means that theme reloading just works. Um, and we clear the cache as well so that it all works seamlessly. Um, and that's a, that was a pretty funky feature to build in. It feels a little bit bit dirty, but um, it was working really well. Um, so talking about views, that leads us on to handlebars. Handlebars is what we've chosen as our templating language. As always, um, controversial decision. Templating language, always controversial. Um, but we decided on handlebars because we wanted to keep our themes really minimal. Um, and we wanted to make it so that there's really one clear way to do things with themes and plugins, and it's completely clear what should go in where if you're trying to solve a problem. Um, and by using handlebars, we strip out the logic out of templates. It's, uh, less, it's less likely that people are going to try and build themes as plugins and plugins as themes, which you kind of get in the WordPress world if you know about that. Um, so we're hoping that this is going to lead to a much cleaner, clearer way forward. And one of the... One of the hardest things that I found when I was building Ghost originally um, was trying to figure out what ORM to use so that we could support SQL first, which is what we wanted to do, um, which I'll cover again a bit later, um, but also provide flexibility and not completely shut the door on the world to know SQL. That you know, we could build something that developers could play with and enjoy, and it would also fit nicely onto servers that had MySQL. And, um, I played with a couple of the different ORMs that are available in the Node world, um, one of them most notably, notably being SQLize, but I found them quite rigid, quite opinionated, and SQLize, you know, it has SQL in the name, it's never going to support anything else. Um, and it wasn't until actually we started getting involved with the community and bringing developers on board that I discovered Bookshelf by the guy that wrote it, um, Tim Greaser. And he, he hadn't released it publicly yet, but he started talking to me about it. It's a promise-driven ORM. And it's actually, it extends Backbone, and we're using Backbone on the client side. So that's kind of a nice little uh, addition. And so what Bookshelf does is Bookshelf manages your models and your collections and the relationships between them. Um, but when it wants to do some heavy lifting, when it wants to go off to the database, what it does is it uses a second library called Connects. And Connects is what writes various flavors of SQL queries. Um, 
And that means that that separation sets Bookshelf up to be able to support Mongo or LevelDB or any other database that you might want to use at some point in the future. <laughs> and keeps Ghost open and flexible to trying, trying it out with different technologies and seeing how it runs on different databases. Um, SQL Lite is our default. Another controversial decision. We wanted to keep Ghost really, really simple to install. The dream is that you do npm install Ghost, npm start, and you can write a blog straight away. No, nothing gets in the way of, from that moment when you think, I want a blog, until when you start writing. And so SQLite doesn't require any sort of setup. There's no configuration. You don't have to create a database. It just works. Um, but as I said, we do have support for MySQL and Postgres built in. Um, but SQLite is quite an interesting module to support in Node because the Node SQLite module requires a native binary to be built. Um, and so when we started this project, in order to get Ghost installed, on Mac, you had to have the Xcode CLI tools. On Linux, you were normally OK, provided you have had some of the standard modules that are usually installed on like Ubuntu and stuff. On Windows, you had to install a certain version of Visual Studio, several patches. You also had to have Python installed. Who has Python installed on Windows? It was an absolute nightmare. It used to take, took you at least half a day to get it installed. So I contacted the guy behind NodeSQL Lite. Um, the module and said, you know, do you reckon we can get native binaries um, pre-compiled and, and inside the project? So it's a bit like some of the other, pro um, there are some other packages that escapes me now that do this, but you can, when you, when you install it, it figures out whether it's got a binary for your architecture and uh, uses that. And so a couple of weeks before we went uh, with the private Kickstarter backer launch, we finally managed to get this into the, mod into the module. And now, as long as you're on a major architecture, Windows 64-bit, Linux, um, or Mac, all of that problem has gone away. And it actually just downloads the right binary for you off of EC2 or S3, one of the two. Um, anyway, so that's, that was a really cool and interesting problem to solve. Um, and I guess another thing that's kind of interesting is that since we've um, done our private release two weeks ago, We've had, obviously, 6,000 people have started using it and had loads of feedback. And I guess the majority of the negative feedback has been around installing Ghost. Not the, the this, this straightforward install it locally, but setting it up on a server. Because WordPress users are not used to having to configure Nginx or something else of that nature. And what nobody seemed to quite grasp about an early release was that it was early um, and that it wasn't finished yet. And that because it was private, we couldn't really roll out any of the tools that we have um, planned for making it easy to install. Um, and I'm sure it won't be a problem for the people in this room, but some of the, some of the feedback that we've had from other people around installing has been you know, fantastic. We've had a complete range of, from people going, no, spoon feed me, I don't want to do any of this, to other people who've gone, hell, you know, I'll have a go, followed an tutorial, and then decided that they were now a hacker and got really, really excited about it. Um, and also, we are working really closely with lots of hosting companies so that when we do do our public launch, there will be one-click installers for those people who don't want to mess around. And that's another thing that's really, really exciting because we've suddenly got a load of major hosting companies who are wanting to support Node and are rolling out support for Node and making it really easy to use. So hopefully, we're driving a little bit of demand and trying to bring Node out into the world. Um, anyway, I'm going to stop tundling on and actually show you a demo. This is where it gets interesting because it's a live demo. And even more interesting because uh, I've done a couple of live demos. I did one where I ran it off of EC2. And I also did one um, last week at LXJS where I did it off of my local machine. But this one, this one's running on the hosted service. Um, I get my screen mirrored. We go. Before I show you the login, I'm going to show you the front end. This is a demo. I set it up while there was another talk going on. I logged into our hosted service. I set up a blog. And then I logged into my old WordPress blog that I haven't written on in ages because, let's face it, it's just a pain in the butt. And um, I imported all my posts just to show that that can actually be done. Um, and this is, this is the stock install of Ghost. So it looks like out the box. This is Casper, our default theme. 
Um, and uh, if I click on a post, you can see it's just a really simple, minimal theme aimed at like personal blogging. It has support for embedded gists or gists. I don't know. Which one is it? Gists? Gists? Is it a gif? Is it a gif? Who knows? Um, <laughs> there we go. Started a debate. Um, it's got some sharing tools. Uh, and if we go back, pagination at the bottom there. You can see that on the screen. All the basic bits and pieces that you get going with a blog, but the fun bits in the back end. So I have to remember what I set the password to. Yeah, remember, there we go, log in. You can see it does give you, it gives you a little notification at the top about the environment that you're running in. Because uh, there's another interesting thing. Um, Ghost has a config file, it has a set of environments, you can run it in development mode, production mode, and we have testing in Travis for, for when we're developing it. WordPress users are completely blown away by this concept of a development environment and, uh, and a production environment. Like, what does that mean? And why would I run it in one or the other? Um, so we've got some interesting education points that we're learning about. Anyway, there's the, this is the default screen that you log into at the moment. As I said, there's no dashboard. But instead, you get thrown straight into your content, a nice list on the, on the left-hand side of all your content. It's an infinite scroll, goes on forever. Um, and then on the right-hand side, you can see the preview of the post, if the post has any content. These are all old ones. I don't have any. It's interesting. And then you can create a new post. Title. It's all standard Markdown, and it has some GitHub flavor Markdown support as well. Um, no, that's not his body. Yeah. That kind of thing. Um, and then down here, in the bottom corner, we have the Save button. I don't know if people at the back can see that. But, um, and then when you want to publish it, it's bright red, publish the button. And go back to the blog. And there Ooh. we go. It does actually work. <laughs> and the more interesting features, things like writing, uh, inserting URLs. Here we go. URL insertion. Let's get a kitten. Save that. And internet. There we go, we've got kitten. Let's update the post. There we go. Kittens everywhere. <laughs> and then the, the rest of the back end is just the settings. Um, nice and simple. You can change how many posts you want to have on that page. I don't know, just make it two just for fun. And there is the, uh, the theme switch down there. I haven't got any other themes to switch to load at the moment, which is a bit of a shame, but it is there. And also user settings. Not particularly fantastically useful when there's only one user, but multi-users coming soon, and then we'll be able to have user profile pages and stuff about you, you as an author and loads more features. Um, let's just double check that changing the number of posts did work. Just as fun. Yeah, there we go. There's only two now. And um, have I got another? I've got two more minutes. Okay, two more minutes to do one last demonstration. Um, the, the hosted service that we are launching hasn't got a front end yet for users, but it does have a back end for us, so I can log in and I can create blogs. And I just thought I would set one up and show you how quick it was. Um, so here we go. This is my blogs that I've got set up here. Um, great British Node conference blog. Let's call it JMNC. And create a blog. Fingers crossed this works. And then GBNC. Go stop. Again, the time it takes to type. Should be there. Oh, is it going to work? Is it going to work? And there it is. Hey. hey. <laughs> so, right. Live demo was done and it kind of worked. It's good. Right. So, if you want to be notified about our public release, which is happening on Monday, if you can't remember, you can log it, go to ghost.org. You can sign up for an email about lots of other news as well. And, um, 
I guess the other thing to say is that, you know, with all open source projects, the, the decisions are made by people who show up. The software gets written by those of you who commit code. Um, so we really hope that as many of you as possible will come and get involved, join in, and help us deliver this next generation platform to the world. Um, that was me, and it's over, and I think I'm on time. Yeah.